are having challenge with even finding the money to send the children to school, to put food on the table. The bills are so high, oh God, and no money. But God, you who owns everything, we're asking you to look down on each case tonight. For those, oh God, who are struggling spiritually, Lord, we ask that you will lift us up, touch us tonight again, oh God, and build up our faith. For those who are in the valley of indecision, that you will help this person or those persons to know that today is the day of salvation and that they should turn over everything to you. Oh God, we look to you with a little less than mustard seed faith tonight and we cast all our cares upon you and so lord do for us now far more than we can ever ask or imagine we leave it all at the altar and we tell you thanks for hearing and thanks for answering in jesus mighty name amen burdens are lifted at calvary Good evening, everyone. Jenny's got more money than she's got money. She works three jobs, she's barely getting by. And Bob got word, his mom's been told it's cancer. So many questions, and all of them ask why. We're living in a broken world. A broken world won't give you any answers. Down. Wrong is right and right is wrong, but not for long. No, not for long. This broken world is created by a savior, and nothing here can take him by surprise. Someday all this hurting will be over. broken world but not for long no not for long see mama spends her waking hours praying her children's done gone left everything behind and daddy's getting tired his faith is fading Cause you can't get water From a well that's running dry We're living in a broken world But a broken world won't give you any answers Everything is upside down Wrong is right and right is wrong But not for long Kimba. 
broken world it's not for long no not for long although for now we're living in a broken cruel world it's not for long no not for Good evening again. So this is a part of the service where we all can participate in. So we'll be taking up our offering at this time. So we're encouraging all of you, no matter what you have, just give willingly. It's better to give than to receive. So you'll see how God will bless you bountiful, bountifully when you give. So bow your heads while I pray. Eternal Father and our God, we give thee thanks. Father, I pray that as we are about to dig in our pockets tonight, I pray that you provide for us in a very special way so we can give and give willingly and not reluctantly for your cause as we give thee thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We bring sacrifice of praise into the house. Night, everyone. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. The house of the Lord is the place of prayer. The house of the Lord is the place of truth. The house of the Lord is the place where the Holy Spirit transforms lives. The house of the Lord is where we hear the dust say it, the Lord. Amen. Tonight, God's man's servant is ready Amen. to deliver the word of the Lord in the house of the Lord. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Let us pray by the grace of God that the Lord will speak to us and we will not be distracted because we'll be focusing on what the Lord is saying to us. Let us pray as we welcome Evangelist Paul Newton before he comes. We will sing our theme song, God Bless You. Years of time have come and gone Since I first heard it told How Jesus would come again
God is good. And all the time, indeed, we serve a great, big, wonderful God. And I want to welcome all of us who are here tonight. Those who are online, we're streaming, right? Those who are online, we welcome you from near or from far. We say welcome to Edgeweir. And uh, Andrea is always excited to go online. And uh, I talked with her today. And um, Sir Dustin, I don't know, you'd have to do some things because um, she was not satisfied because she did not get, get anything last night. So we have to work something out. Amen. But we are delighted to have all of you here tonight. Let me see the hands of all our visitors. All our non-Adventist visitors. Just raise your hand. Let me see them wherever you are. Amen and amen. We're delighted to know that you could make it to Edgeware. Amen. And I am extremely happy tonight for our prayer ministry's coordinator from CJC, and I'm not going to, she can't just come and sit. Come, Sister Ruth. That would not be right. Amen? A very, very humbled, but a powerful woman of God. And uh, Sister Ruth walked like prayer. She talked like prayer, and uh, she's a prayer warrior. Greet the brethren, sis. Greet the brethren. Amen. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. How are you feeling? Yes. Blessed yes. and highly favored. Yes. yes, I'm hearing you are doing wonderful works over here. Yes. yes, and you didn't know it. But one of these those evenings, I was here. Yes. And I prayed from here. Yes. But in here, it didn't look so good. Yes. And I'm abundantly sure that that is why so many of you are here this evening. I want to bring you greetings from Central Jamaica Conference. They are behind us. Although they are all the way over there in Portmore with that mega 1,000 and more. Every morning we want to let you know some persons can't even call the name Edgeware. But online we are praying for you guys. Amen. And we are abundantly sure that all those who should be saved they are going to be saved right here. God bless you. Amen. Thank you very much, Sister Ruth. Thank you very much. And uh, God richly bless you, sis. Just let me do my manly duty. Amen. And youngsters, you need to learn. Amen. But we serve a wonderful God, and we are indeed happy. Um, I know she's a very busy person, but uh, she takes the time um, to make sure that she visit with us tonight. We are truly grateful. Amen. And uh, there are some persons. Oh, I want to say thanks to Sister Ruta. Did I get it right? For that wonderful song. Say amen. amen. The days of broken world will soon be over. And I want to thank you tonight for reminding us. That even though we are living in a broken world. I didn't say broken earth. Broken world. God of all things in store. Amen. So now you're going to find your neighbor. You know how we do it at night. Find your neighbor. Sister Ruth and Sister Ruth might not know. So you'd have to find a neighbor. Find a neighbor. Just hold on to somebody tonight. You know how we do it. And before we start, let me remind you that I don't like whispering in public. Amen. So you're going to say neighbor. And that is whispering. Say neighbor. neighbor. One more time. Neighbor. neighbor. Welcome. Welcome. Neighbor. neighbor. You're at the right place. At the right time. Praising the right God. So neighbor. Get the right attitude. So you can receive the right blessing. Then say neighbor. Oh neighbor, I am begging you tonight, if you 
have not surrendered to Christ, please do so tonight before the service is over. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you again. Oh Lord, you have been so good. And the evidence are all around us that we're living in a broken world. And we are broken people. Yes, we are. We're not what you desire for us to be. And we're nowhere near where you want of us to be. But we're happy to know you have not finished with us as yet. You are still working on us. We're happy to know you are not visiting us tonight with your wrath. But you have come to Edgeweir with grace and with mercy. And so tonight we ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you will step down in this place. Fill it with your glory. Demonstrate your power to both man and angels. That people will know you are still alive. Defeat the enemy tonight by giving someone on the knee this thing. Someone in line. Someone walking on the street. Give someone the victory tonight. Lose and deliver. As you use this lump of clay, we ask, O oh Lord, divinity will take over. And humanity will decrease. For Christ's sake, we pray. And amen. Are you enjoying the messages so far? Are you getting tired of me? You want me to go home tonight? Huh? That no is not convincing, Sister Ruth. But we're going to go on anyway. Amen. Last night, anybody remember what the caption we looked at last night? Don't put it up, Justin. Let it stay right there. Let me prick the brain of the people. Pardon me? Somebody said the Lord's divine blueprint. What was it, sister? God's divine blueprint. And last night we examined... How the sanctuary service work. I shared with you last night. That we are no longer in the courtyard. I shared with you. We are no longer in the holy place. The activities are centered in the holy place. But this is what I want you to know. That we are not the only ones that are concerned with what is happening in the most holy place. The devil is watching every move. And he knows exactly what is happening. Because the work in the sanctuary does not only affect humanity, but it affects the work of the devil. Am I with you? Because Christ pleading his blood on our behalf, every sinner that repent, the devil would have to bear that sinner condemnation. You're not with me tonight. One preacher put it this way years ago. When I went to the Adventist church, the first time I heard the sanctuary message, the brother said, the devil is a bag holder. In other words, God will place every sin of every repented sinner on the enemy. But the devil don't want that to happen. He wants you to face your own condemnation. 
His desire is that you will face the full wrath of God. And that is why he's busy doing everything he's doing. Presenting false hope. Discouraging you. That is why he's busy keeping you entertained. Because Christ is not in the business of entertainment. Christ is in the business of pointing out our sin and then pointing us to the only source to get rid of sin. So tonight, based on the sanctuary activity, in what two major capacity does Jesus serve his people? What, read with me, what fantastic what benefit do we receive from his what? Loving ministry. Now watch this now. Christ becomes our what? Our Passover. Now remember, the Passover was instituted in Israel to as a celebration when they left Egypt. Am I with you? And I tell you tonight. So the Passover was what? Celebrated because they left Egypt. Now watch this now. Something significant had to take place for Israel to leave Egypt. Pharaoh did not want to let them go. And tonight, the devil don't want to let you go. But hear me. The devil don't have the power or the wisdom to keep you away from Jesus. If you desire to be saved, you cannot be lost. You don't work, you're not working with a preacher. If you desire to be saved, you cannot be lost. Because the, the power of the enemy is of no match to God. So what happened? God instruct Moses. Read Exodus chapter 12. God has said to Moses, tell Israel, kill a lamb. Mm -hmm. When you kill the lamb, because this is a matter of urgency, you will have to do it with speed. Social grace was not really relevant at the dining table. I might talk with you. Now you, you got to cut and swallow. Your line must be what? Good. And the, the meat was not to be prepared as every other meat. You are going to eat it with bitter herbs. Not only that, when you kill the lamb, paint the doorpost, paint the lintel with the blood. And then Jesus said something. When I see the blood, I will do what? Not when I see your car. Not when I see the size of your house. Not your paycheck. But when I see the blood, I will do what? The blood is a token of deliverance. The blood is a token of victory. So the Bible said when God sees the blood, he will what? Pass over. In other words, when Jesus sees the blood, he recognized that some redeemed Israelites are living there. Am I talking with you? Somebody. When Jesus sees the blood, he recognized you accept the price that was paid for your sin and Calvary. When Jesus sees the blood, he recognized that you are walking with him. You are one of his. And let me tell you something. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, if Jesus Jesus is with you, you will fear no evil, for no weapon that form against you shall prosper. So they were asked to paint the lintel 
with the blood. We get past Passover celebration. We are not looking to the Passover anymore, but we are looking to something more significant. I might talk with you. The Bible tells us, let's read now, seeing then that we have a what? We have a what? And notice Paul did not just say an high priest. When you're reading any sentence and there's emphasis, you must recognize the difference between what was and what is being referred to now. I might talk with you. Seeing then we have such a great high priest who has passed through the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, let us owe our what? Confession. For we do not have an high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness. And I say amen. And that is why when people say about me no matter Am I talking with you? Because the best way you can look at me is to look through the eyes of a sinner. Am I talking with you? So you're not going to be able to see me better than you are. Talk to me somebody. But my concern is with what Jesus says. And Jesus sympathizes with our weakness. But was in all point tempted like as we are. He walked the same earth. He saw the prostitute. He saw the chunker. He smelled the holder of the liquor. He saw them cursing and swearing. And he was able to overcome. It's an indication that if we're connected with him, we too can be victorious. So Jesus is touched with what you are going through. So don't tell me that you can't overcome. Jesus know you need some money. I might talk with you. Jesus know that carnal nature beating you up. Talk to me somebody. Jesus know you are weak to the flesh. Jesus know you are weak in whatever he is. You are weak and not only that. He is providing help for you tonight. He sympathizes with us. In all point, he was tempted like as we are. And even worse than us. Because if I sin, if I messed up, it is going to affect me. And it is going to, people are going to start to wonder and question the church. Am I talking with you? But at Jesus' sin, the whole plan of salvation would fail. Mm -hmm. everything would mash up it wouldn't make no sense with their heads where I preach what would we preach about a defeated Jesus but tonight we are preaching about a victorious Jesus somebody praise him with me tonight so listen to me tonight and you need to make and you need to know the difference between Jesus and your pastor you're silent you need to know the difference between Jesus and your boyfriend. You need to know the difference between Jesus and your political representative. Watch what Jesus said now. He said, let us therefore come home to where? To the throne of grace that we can what? And that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help. This is not a call to church. This is not a call to an, any financial institution. But this is a call to the audience chamber of God. He said we must come boldly. But in your coming, in your going, you're going to find some breakdown of vehicle in front of you. You cannot hitch up behind them. Am I talking with you? You got to press along saints. Press along in God's own way. Persecution you will bear. Trial and 
some people don't want you to get there. But you got to be determined to get there. You got to tip over some people. Am I walk talking with you tonight? I say you got to tip over some people. You got to tip over some boyfriend. You got to step over some girlfriend. You got to step over some job. You got to tip over some friend. Because there are some people in your life. The earlier they disappear, is the better for you. Because the earlier they disappear, you will have a bright idea. Am I talking with you tonight? Let me repeat it. I said, the earlier they disappear, you will have a bright idea. Because there are some people, they are thick like the cloud. You need the son of righteousness to arise, sister Ruth, with healing in his will and bring you deliverance. One of the problem with us, when you fly too low, you are able to attract all kind of virus. Hello? You are able, when you fly too low, and you have everybody up on. You got to ask Jesus to take the flight a little higher. Lord, lift me up, and I shall stand up. Plant my feet and I a ground. We are living in dangerous days. Am I talking with you? Can't you see that the very atmosphere is a poison with evil? Why do you believe blood is running as it is? Why do you believe homosexual dropping them pants as they are? Because the devil recognized that Jesus is at the edge of stepping from between man and God. Am I talking with you? And when Jesus stepped from between man and God, it is going to be dark and hurt. It is going to be dangerous because we'll have to live without an intercessor. But one thing I'm happy about, at that time, the safe cannot be lost. Hello, I thought I would hear you say amen. I said the safe cannot be lost. But this is where it gets dangerous. The, the lost cannot be saved. And that is why tonight, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. The little things where you have put off Jesus for, can't even buy a night dinner. Am I talking with you? The little job, sometimes you lose it. The little liquor, all you get out of it is cirrhosis of the liver. Jesus served as a what? Sacrifice for our sin. And as our heavenly what? High priest. Jesus' death as our, sac as our what? Sacrificial lamb. And as our what? Substitute. And is what? continual powerful ministry as our heavenly high priest accomplished two incredible miracles for us. It accomplished two what? Two incredible what? Miracle for us. One, a complete life change called the new birth. You know you're the preacher tonight. I tell you before, your Jamaican passport can carry you in some Caribbean country. But more say you know, I want to go to Bahamas and Cayman. You want to go to America. You want to go to Canada. You want to go to Great Britain. Because according to it, it's greener pasture. Am I talking with you? So when, when, that's why when people ask you, which foreign you go, they ask you if a big foreign. You never hear that phrase? A big foreign you go? Most say you want to go big foreign. Well, you see me? Me want to go the bigger foreign. You don't hear the preacher tonight. My intention is when, when I take off, I will not be landing at Jeff Kennedy here. What am I talking with you? When I take off, Sir Walker, I'll be touching down and streets of gold. I'll be living between walls of Jasper. I will be eating from the tree of life. Am I talking with you? My home is in heaven. No rent to pay. But Jesus paid it all. He made a way for me. 
more pretty lights. We're going to build houses. No more burglar bars. We're going to live. We're not going to die. No more dove cut. No more murderers. No more family platter. No more shatter. No more dapper. No more heads. No more cancer. We will live forever and ever and ever with Jesus. I'm going to be traveling. I said, I'm going to be traveling. Sometimes there's a lot of pressure. You go to the U.S. Embassy and they tell you, you don't have sufficient ties. So they are not going to grant you their visa. Am I talking with you? And sometimes you get the visa and because you abuse it, when you reach back at Jamaica, they put a stamp in it and tell you you're barred from the United States for four years. Am I talking with you? The devil won't put some stamp in our visa. That, that makes us not eligible to get to heaven. Am I talking with you? But there is something called the blood of Jesus. Am I talking with you? And the blood of prevail. There is wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There is power in the blood. Power in the blood. Power to lose you. Power to free you. Power to save you. Power to redeem you. Power to keep you. Somebody praise him tonight. I'm not preaching about a dead Jesus. And that is why sometimes you, you may see me get excited. But there is something down inside of me. Telling me to go on. Am I talking with you? He walks with me. He talks with me. And he tells me. I am his own. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. So we have a new birth. In other words. We go through a new registry. I might talk with you, but our name cannot be contained at the record at RGD. This too big. I might talk with you. They don't have the kind of paper to write it down on. They don't have the kind of ink to use to write it. It is written with the blood. It is written with the blood. And it is written down in the books of life. I wish somebody would praise him tonight. So watch this now. All the sins of the past are forgiven. That's why I love Jesus. And I know some of you have a checklist in the church. <laughs> Help me Jesus. I know you have a checklist. You used to do this before. That tick off. Me not think you change. You used to do that before. That tick off. You don't look like a change. I tell a friend of mine one day. I said to him. You see my past? Is my garbage. Me not keep garbage. After a while it don't look good. It don't smell good. I dispose with my garbage. So when I dispose with my garbage. If you want to walk and take it up. Walk with my garbage. And not feel me anymore. Am I talking with you? Me don't dash away. Talk to me somebody. So don't matter who want to put you down. As long as Jesus lift you up. Your sins are forgiven. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Once the son set you free. He wants the son set you free. Not the deacon. Not the elder. Not the pastor. Not your bishop. Not your money. But once the son of the living God set you free. Hallelujah. You are free indeed. Amen. Not only that, Jesus give us the power 
to live right in, in the present and in the future. Am I talking with you? you? You know somehow we do it. Sometimes you never know how we do it. Am I talking with you? But when you are connected to the blessed rock of ages, your life will be different. So these two miracles makes a person righteous. Which means a what? Right relationship exists between the person and God. This is not righteousness by works. But righteousness by faith. Am I talking with you? I tell you. Jesus take the dirty tear up garment from you. And then put one on you. His own perfect righteous character. Because all our righteousness are nothing but what? So watch this. You know, it will cover our past sins and count us what? Guiltless. And the word here that is used for cover it. I mean put something over it and make it stay there. It means to erase it completely. To wipe it out. Am I talking with you? So we are created in God's image. We were created in God's image in the beginning. Genesis 1, 26, 27. Jesus promised to restore us to God's image. The servant of the Lord said, The recreated man is much better than the created man. Am I talking with you? You, you, you don't get it. B because now we are connected to Jesus. By something that cannot be separated. In other words, that is why Jesus tell Isaiah, tell Israel. When you say, me no member you. How you could have said something like that? Huh? Jesus said, tell them a woman will forget the son of her womb. But he said, I will not forget you. And then Jesus said, this is the reason why I cannot forget you. You are engraved in the palms of my hand. Your walls are continually before me. He will bear the nail print in his hand throughout eternity. Why is it there for you and for me? Jesus gives us the desire. To live righteously and then grant us his power to actually accomplish it. What a God we serve. Jesus by this two miracle will cause us to happily do the things that are that please God. He removed the death sentence from us and I say amen. amen. You, you don't so like you're happy. Me in the God get us. Hangman loose was at our neck. Death demanded a price that we could not pay. But on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross with the emblem of suffering and a shame. But on a that whole cross where the dear Lamb of God. That's where with the gold of his blood and with the silver of his tears, Jesus paid it all. Jesus assumed responsibility for keeping us faithful until he returned to take us to heaven. What a promise. Oh Lord, you don't get it. Jesus assumed responsibility to keep us faithful. You don't get it. No weapon that form against you shall up. You think a little time people want to see you feel? But you have more than the energizer bunny. You just keep going and going and going and going and going in Jesus. That the more they try to keep you down, the higher you rise. Shall renew their state, shall mount up with their wings as eagle. They shall run, not be weary. They shall.
shall walk. You think a little time people want to say something about you, but God fall over them tongue? Oh Lord. You don't understand what is happening in the sanctuary. You think a little time they want to point their finger at you and your hand can't go up? Am I talking with you? You think a little time some demonic spirit stop by you, but when they turn up, they see the blood? Am I talking with you? You think a little time some Hebrew men want to wipe you out, but when they turn up, they see angels with John a sword. Am I talking with you? For he that dwelleth where? In the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Only with mine eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. No plague shall come nigh my dwelling. And the money we have, and the blood we have, am I talking with you? And the rich, we rich, a grace I do it. We're not better than anybody. It is mercy running this thing. Am I talking with you? It is not Hawkeye. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. It is Jesus. If I have Jesus, I have everything. Jesus is ready to fulfill all of those glorious promises. But Jesus said we must do his father's will. So watch this now. When the people refused to bring their sacrifice on the day of atonement, they were cut off. So those of us who sit here making the opportunity pass by, those of us who sit here, those of us who are listening, saying at some more convenient time, it might not turn up. Am I talking with you? I said it might not turn up. The time to see the Lord is now. Once each year on the day of atonement, a solemn day of judgment took place in Israel. We are living in what is being referred to as the day of atonement. In other words, God is going through the record. Am I talking with you? And that is why in the book of Revelation chapter 3, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and I will sup with him. And he shall be my people and I shall be your God. Buy of me gold shining fire. You need white raiment so that the, your, your nakedness will not appear. And all of us, the, the Victoria's Secret can cover it. The powder on your face can cover it. The long hair that you buy can't cover it. The expensive suit can't cover it. The, the rays appear can't cover it. I'm talking with somebody is listening tonight. Where you live cannot cover it. Am I talking with you? Sin mashes up. Sin wrecks us. There is only one way. And that is through the blood of Jesus. Tell somebody the blood prevail. Those all who were to confess every sin. Those who refused. Were that very day cut off forevermore. 
from the camp of Israel. Listen to me tonight. I'll soon send you home. But there were two goats. One was known as Zahazazel, which is also the scapegoat, which represents the enemy. There was one that would be slain. The Lamb of God would be slain when the high priest finished ministering in the sanctuary. He would have symbolically walk out, place his hand on the head of that scapegoat. Transferring the sin that were transferred from the people to the veil of the temple. Symbolically, the sins were now transferred from the temple to the originator of sin. A him created. So I him have to keep it. You, you with me? I no feel me. I no feel you. So no take it up. No live with it. You can't avoid it. But you can escape it. Am I talking with you? Because you are born in sin. But you don't have to die in sin. Because we are sin abound. Grace much more abound of somebody. So don't. And a strong man would carry that animal. It would die in the wilderness. Listen to me. Satan went dead in the wilderness. Am I talking with you? You don't sound excited. And that is why in the, in the sanctuary service that is taking place, Jesus literally wants to transfer the sin from you and give them back to who created them. That's what Jesus wanted, you know? Jesus don't want you to keep the sin thing. Because he know it is dangerous. He wants to take it from you. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. But that the world through him might be saved. But this is the condemnation that light has come. But men rather darkness than light. Because their deeds are evil. I just have a few more texts and then I send you home. Now watch this now. And this is taken from Ezekiel. Can you see it? It is too fancy for your eyes. All right, let me read it for you. He cried also in mine ears with a loud voice, saying, Cause them that have the charge over the city to draw near every man with his destroying weapon in his hand. War time. Something might go take place. And this is not a command from the devil. This is a command from God. So let them draw near with their weapons in their hand. And behold, six men came from the way of the high gate, which led towards the north. And every man a slaughter weapon in his hand. And one man come among them was clothed with linen with a writer's in corn by side and they went in and stood beside the brazen the brazen halter and the glory of the Lord of Israel was gone from From them. And the Lord said unto him, Go through the midst of the city, to the midst of Jerusalem. And watch this thing. And this is what you need to get on your head. Set a mark upon the, the forehead of the men that sigh and that cry for the abominations that had been done in the midst thereof. And to the other, he said, 
in mine hearing, go ye after him to the city and smite. Let not if let not your eyes spare, neither have ye any pity. Slay utterly old, young, both made and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark. In other words, what mark are we talking about here? You see, the final act of Jesus in the most holy place is to put the seal of God upon you. Am I talking with you? What is the seal of God? Huh? The seal of God has to do with a Sabbath. The seal is a circling in the truth, both spiritually and intellectually. Am I talking with you? When you are sealed, you are settled in the truth. When you are sealed, you are settled in the word of God. So the command to the destroyed angel, slaughter everything. But them will have the mark. You can't touch them. They are mine. Am I talking with you? These are my trophies that I will take to heaven. And then the final text. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the what? Sea, nor on the trees. And I want you to understand, all of these are symbolic. The hurt, I hear so the hurt. We are on red. You know, get it? Hurt are on red. Man lose them head. There's a song, Sister Ruth, me know you don't know it. But there was a song that they used to sing, Man sick. Head no good. You know that one, Sister Jace? Head sick. Head no good. And the lie them I tell. Head sick. Then your head no good. Then the mind that are under the control of demons. But Jesus gave the command. So hold back. Hold back. No make destruction run yet. Because when them let go, God help us. You don't see no blood run yet. You don't see them boy drop them pants yet. Them no burn no cliff yet. You don't see no big gun boss yet. You don't see prostitute walk the road yet. When the angels let go, the enemy will be given the opportunity to carry out his work to its fullest effect for a season. No protection. Huh? Mercy gone. Judgment come. But watch this now. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And this is what? This is why we call you here. Hello? We now ask you for sown a seed. All we ask you for the repent. I might talk with you. We now give you a bank account. We are giving you the name of Jesus. I might talking with you. We now tell you, bring the piece of your clothes. We are tell you, come. As you are, for there is still a fountain filled with the blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Every sinner. So the Bible says, hold back until we seal them. But when the sealing is complete, when the save is secure, when the lost reject the final pleading of the Holy Spirit. When God take off him priestly garment and 
put on a vesture dipped in blood. When Jesus, hallelujah, stepped out from between man and God, when the door of mercy closed, you are going to wish a tent would come back to Hedgewear. You're going to pray for this loud mouth preacher to come back. The Bible tells us in here, must you go wander from city to city, from east to west, from north. In that they are all the fear virgin. You know, those who believe I'm too beautiful for Christianity. I have too much money. I can floss when I want floss. I can buy out a bar. When you buy out the bar, all you're going to get drunk. But when Jesus buy your heart, I see if you are going to see him. Am I talking with you tonight? So, my brothers and sisters, spiritual things spiritually deserve. The Lord said in the last days, when you reject the truth, he's going to send you a strong delusion that you believe a lie. Jesus is closing his work in the most holy place. But before that day, I don't know when. I don't know when. He wants to save you. He wants to save you. I, I'd rather have Jesus. I'm hoping I'm not disturbing you. I'd rather have Jesus. You know that song? I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be his. Sister Ruth, come on, sister. I'd rather be his than of riches and tomb. a group here. You're running a risk if you go home the way you came. After tonight, Paul Jason Newton not be held accountable for your sin. I have done what the Lord called me to do. The rest is left to you. I'm going to ask the baptized members to stand. Only baptized members.
sick of pain. And then just if you're not a baptized member, you might even be a backslider. Remain in your seat. Only baptized members. Parents with those children, you have them. You need to release them. You need to surrender them to Jesus. So tonight, there's some folks sitting. I'm going to ask somebody that is either standing or sitting beside them to hold on to those who are sitting. They might be before you. Look for me, friends. You, you see somebody sitting. Hold on to that person and ask him or her to stand with you, please. Whether it's a child or an adult, somebody that, that is sitting, just ask the person to stand with you. An individual is standing with you, just ask them to walk with you. Sir Walker, um, Sir Richard, Sir, Sir, um, Sir Osan, you're holding on to somebody, just ask them to walk with you tonight. Issue. It is a matter of life or death. Jesus is trying to do something for you. He, his desire is to release you. He wants to save you in his kingdom. You cannot be saved by your own doing. That is why tonight is inviting you to come. The people of Sodom did not know that was the last night they would spend. The folks in the Antediluvian did not know either. Did not know. I don't know what lies ahead. I don't know what tomorrow brings. But one thing I know for sure. If you keep holding on to who you are. As you are. You run the risk of hearing the part from me. I know you're not. One final appeal. A sister Ruth will pray for us. You know you should be at the altar. And you are resisting. Why resist God? Why put up a fight with him? The only one who can save you. Why not say, Lord, in my weak moments, I'm struggling, but I want to do what is right. Why not? Why give the enemy one last chance to kill you in your sin why not turn it over to Jesus tonight with your heads bowed with your eyes closed with your thoughts lifted heavenward sister Ruth talk to God tonight sis. let us pray our great God and our Heavenly Father. We give you thanks, dear Lord, for the words that you sent to our hearts this evening. We know, dear Lord, that we were born in sin, but we give you thanks tonight for your words. We don't have to die in sin. Tonight, dear Lord, we give you thanks for those who are at the altar. There are some, dear Lord, who are comfortable in their seats because they are baptized. But they know without the shadow of a doubt that they too should be at the altar or else they are going to die in their sins. Tonight, dear Lord, is a night when all of us need to look into our lives. 
see where we stand with you and allow you to transform us. Without that transformation, without that revival, without the Holy Spirit in our lives, we are going nowhere. And there are so many times, mighty God, when it is our lives that are preventing others from coming to you. But tonight, Heavenly Father, I pray that those who are looking on the lives of the so-called Christians and are remaining on the outside that once tonight, oh God, they will look on you, the one who have no sin, the one who died for our sins, and not on the members of the church. Father in heaven, I pray tonight that your blood will reach the heart of someone tonight who is about to die in sin because it's not your wish or your desire for any of us to die in sin, oh God. You want us, dear Lord, to live and to live that everlasting life with you, Father in heaven. I beg you tonight again, Jesus, that you will speak to the hearts of those who are about to die in sin. And I pray, oh God, that they will arise and allow you to wash them in your blood. Father in heaven, the die is cast. Yes, Satan wants all of us on his side. But you are fighting hard for us, oh God, because your blood was shed to save us, dear God, from sin. Father in heaven, I beg you tonight, sweet Jesus. The person, dear Lord, who is listening tonight, but not under this tent. I pray, Lord, that you will lead the Bible workers and the pastors to them tomorrow. Yes. And even if the Bible workers and the pastors are passing their homes, sweet Jesus, I beg you, God, that they will be the one who will call out that they want to surrender their lives to you. What must I do to be saved? Jesus, we are happy that you are coming soon. But we know, Lord, that others are left to be saved. Jesus, we beg you tonight to bind that strong man and set the captives free. Pray for those that are at the altar tonight that there will be no turning back. Regardless of what they have to leave behind, help them to know that what is before them is greater than what they are going to be left behind. Jesus, peace. There are so many times, oh God, when we don't like the way you talk. When we don't like the way you act. Because sometimes we pray for our children, our husbands, our wives, our family members, our co-workers, our neighbors to come to you. But in order for them to come to you, Lord, sometimes you have to put them on their backs to lie down. For them to look up and recognize that there's a God who needs to be served and there's a hell to shun. Father in heaven, if you have to put somebody on their backs tonight for them to look up and see you, go ahead, mighty God. Go ahead. You are God. You can do whatsoever you want. So tonight we are asking you, Jesus. Lay somebody low tonight and allow them to give up their stubborn wills and surrender to you. Pray in a special way for your man's servant. Oh God, you have given him some words that I've never heard before. Father in heaven, I recognize he's anointed by you. Pray, Lord, that you will keep him under the anointing. Pray, dear Heavenly Father, that you will take over what concerns him and you will fix what needs to be fixed so that this man that you have anointed will remain anointed. Oh, Lord, I pray for this community. I pray for every unsaved person in this community. Pray, God, that this tent that is pitched here, that those who are unsaved, oh God, will run into the ark. Before the door is closed. Because you yourself will close the door and no man can open. But there stands a door now that is ajar. Father in heaven, 
and we beg you to have mercy. Because when the door is closed, mercy is gone. Take control of all of us now, God. Those who are baptized in the church and still living in sin, torment us, Jesus. Give us no rest by day and night until we totally surrender, surrender to you. There are so many persons who are working hobby against your church, but the time is coming when they will have to leave. But as of now, oh God, there is still hope for this person who is baptized and has become a stumbling block in the church. Torment that person tonight, God. Torment that person tonight until that person repents and stop blocking the way of the sinners. Take control now, dear God. Take us home safely. Let your will be done in our lives and your kingdom come to us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. Thank you very much, Sister Ruth. Another sobering message. A good way to end week number three. And we look forward to seeing you again this coming Sabbath. Just want to remind you that tomorrow evening is our rest evening. And Friday, we prepare for Sabbath. Friday is also a public holiday that will give us more time to prepare, spend time with our families, and then we come back. We look forward to seeing you. There's a massive garage sale coming up. Sherlock, please. There's a massive garage sale coming up. The prices are going to be really, really good. So please bear that in mind, and I will continue to remind you. Now, like we did last week, Wednesday evening, we're going to close off our dismissal song with another song. So we're going to do that now and ask you to join us. Christ has gone a home to prepare up beyond the blue sky.